And you've just heard Exit Scene, the latest single from Sapien, otherwise known as Scott Simpson. And I'm delighted to be joined by Scott now. Hello, Scott. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. What can you tell us about Exit Scene? Exit Scene, um, it's my most recent single. It's a um, bit of a departure for me, um, taking a more sort of pop sort of route. Um, I'm more used to the kind of rock and kind of prog and that kind of thing. So um, I made a wee conscious effort to, to do something a bit more radio friendly. Right. Um, so, yeah, I'm just, I'm into experimentation just now. So the past few singles I've, I've put out have all been very, very different from each other. So, yeah, I was going to say, because you've kind of been building towards exit scene with the, we will hear provocateur later on, but the last few singles or whispers as well, you've kind of been building towards a more kind of electronic sound for want of a better word. Yeah. I mean, when I first started out, it was purely just an acoustic project. Yeah. Um, and then gradually, I think during lockdown, especially, um, I bought a full a home recording setup and that kind of opened a lot of doors for me so um obviously you can, you can download different kind of uh electronic patches and stuff like that and a lot of synths and i've bought all the gear i may as well use it so <laughs> yeah. um it's been a lot more freeing considering that i was so limited to start with so i'm learning a little bit at a time and i'm mm -hmm. kind of you know developing my sound as i sort of learn all these new skills like with synths and, and different things like that um but yeah, I think my next track's going to be a bit crazier. I'll just keep up in the ante, I think. Excellent, excellent. And because you did, you know, you mentioned your uh, acoustic stuff, which is kind of at the time I first heard you, I think uh, you get the album Cold Logic, which came out, which is a more kind of acoustic sound. Yeah, yeah, that was um, the first thing I recorded once I got this big all signal dancing home set up. And I wanted that kind of sort of full band kind of sound even though I'm doing it on my own so yeah. that allowed me to sort of you know do that full album um but yeah that was an absolute nightmare to do that doing that on your own you know with very little training or you know I had to go out and buy the idiot's guide to, to home recording basically so um I've opted just to re record and release one single at a time and sort of pour myself into that right um as opposed to absolutely draining myself every album so yeah that's that's the the plan the future plan i think it's interesting i think that that seems to be the way a lot of people are now doing it instead of you know releasing an album first and then maybe taking a few tracks off it they're releasing a single or a, you know even a four track ep or something like that but more often perhaps you know less sizable releases but done it, doing it more often yeah and that's the way things are nowadays i mean i'm as i said i'm i'm big into sort of prog and stuff like that and i like a lot of sort of classic rock records and stuff like that and it's, it's really important that, you know it's all album stuff that i've always been into so yeah. you know the, the state that things are with the uh, online streaming it makes sense especially if you're you're doing it you know without any funding yeah you know, without any any backup you know one single at a time makes sense but i do love an album though that's the thing so i've always got that wee kind of idea for a, a an album then i sort of scare myself out of it again having been bitten once so yeah, it's, it's it's down to singles now. So you, you recorded your recent stuff, obviously during lockdown, and as you say, you've got the equipment in to do it. Now that that's kind of easing, would you look to get involved with other people, or are you still kind of at the stage where you want to experiment on your own? Um, it's funny that you should say that. I mean, the past wee while, the past few weeks, I've been sort of considering more and more about looking into getting a wee band put together because, uh, as I said, all these songs are building up and I'm adding more and more elements to them all the time, all the electronic stuff, all this kind of full band kind of set up. Yeah. Um, and I've been going out and playing all these songs, you know, they're all written acoustically to start with, right. um, like I've always done. But I think, you know, certain in certain places and certain songs it can be a bit lacking playing live, I feel. So... I think it would be really suited. A lot of the songs would be really suited to a, a full a full band. So that might be my next wee ventures to go out and sort of start advertising for a wee a wee drummer and a wee bass player and see what happens. Oh excellent. And you talked about um 
your influences. And actually, before we spoke, I looked at your uh, Sapien Influences playlist on Spotify, and it really is varied. It's fantastic. There's some great music on there. But I'll just to take a few examples, you've got A Perfect Circle, you've got The Smiths, and you've got Duran Duran, which I've kind of got in my record sales as well. It's yeah. absolutely that breadth of uh, uh, things. So you basically... Oh, I'm interested in what has influenced your recent music then. Um, funnily enough, I think it's purely just listening to the radio. I made a concerted effort to, when I'm in the car, to just put on the radio, which I never used to do, um, and listen to what's, what's current. So, um, Dua Lipa, I started listening to her. Um, what was the last thing I heard? Um, Lizzo. Um, her last single, the bass on that just blew me away. I love all that kind of thing. Um, stuff that's a bit out of my wheelhouse. Um, the weekend as well, like his last album, all that kind of 80s synth kind of stuff really played into what I, I really like. So that was an inspiration to to start adding all that those kind of elements into the music. Um so yeah, it's 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 one of those things. And top of that as well, I've kind of started looking backwards as well, like all my kind of roots in music are all in kind of like metal. I used to be in a lot of metal bands when I was younger. Um, and I've kind of gradually kind of morphed into whatever I'm doing just now. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of things that are really uh, intricate and very kind of layered and very precise. Yeah. And I think I've carried, that's a really big thing in metal, like accuracy is, is king in metal music. So everything needs to be really, really, tight and mechanical um but the same could be said about disco you know so it's it's i've, I've kind of carried that with me and I've, that, you know that's kind of what's the word it's like a wee stepping stone i've carried that with me into kind of like this kind of pop realm as well well i was going to ask you about your kind of metal roots because i know that's going to be you, you, you started off and is that something you might at some point go back to in terms of making your own music um I think so. I mean, there's the options there. As I said, I've got all the gear now. I mean, I've got, still got all my amps and guitars and, you know, they all turn up to 11. I can do it if I want to. I've just, <laughs> I've made the, the the conscious decision to just shun all that right. for this project and um, to see what else I can do. So it's, it's very easy for me just to plug a guitar in and turn that up and, and do something a bit crazy with that. But that being said, it's... You know, I spent a good ten years doing that, and now um, I've kind of, I've not got it out of my system. I still listen to stuff like that regularly, but I think creatively, I think it's, I, I, you know, I've bought a, a, a violin, you know, for my Christmas a couple of years ago, and I'm, I'm struggling to learn to play that. It's that kind of thing. I, I just, yeah. I really want to kind of open up and try new things. Um, but yeah, I think a, a wee, a wee kind of metal tinged effort might be on the cards as well. No reason well, I think as well, if you're deciding that you're not going to perhaps do albums in the same in the way that you used to, then releasing various singles is, is, is there, isn't it? Unless you feel you have to have an identity for each kind of project you have, you know, you can you can do what you want. Yeah, I mean, it, it might even get to the point where, you know, people who follow what I'm doing, um, you know, it might become a kind of, I might be known for, you know, doing different genres and that may be my thing as, you know, a, a multi-genreist. Is that even a word? I don't, I don't know. know. Sounds good. <laughs> I think I just made it up. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to try anything. A wee bit of reggae, whatever, whatever's going. And as during lockdown, you got this new equipment and you've, you know, you, you say you've got your violin that you're going to be trying to, was that a kind of vital thing for getting you through that time? You know, having this, these new skills to learn or new toys yeah. to play with even? Yeah, it helped. I mean, I was working through the entire lockdown, but then in your spare time, it's it's quite difficult. Um, so yeah, it was a wee kind of, uh, started as a hobby, this whole project, and then it's kind of grown and grown and grown. Um, as I said, my partner brought a, uh, bought a violin for me, and then every kind of birthday and Christmas, there's another little musical instrument, another little toy or trinket from a wee music room that I've built. So, right. um, the sky's the limit at the moment, really, when it comes to to, to trying new things. Yeah. So now, now the exit scene's out. Um, have you already thinking about what maybe your next single will be, or is it kind of too soon for that? Um, oh, I've got plenty on the horizon. I've got a, a computer full of stuff at the moment. Um, I've got two or three tracks 
I just need to throw some vocals on there. So I've got, I've got choices. I've got a ballad. I've got a, a heavier one. I've got an electronic one. So um, however the mood kind of hits me, I might just uh, roll, a, roll a dice and see what comes out. How do you choose? How do you think, right, um, the, do you think of your singles? Because it sounds to me like there's a progression going on, as I said. You had Cold Logic and then you had the singles that you've brought out more recently and they seem to be more kind of, as you say, radio friendly or, or electronic or however we want to describe them. Do you think that, well, next there'll be another step in that or do you, are you tempted to do something completely different? Um, well, I think because I'm a, a bit weird that way, I think doing the, the not crazy thing would be crazy for me to do. So, you know, leaning more into the kind of more poppy radio friendly thing like all my mates wouldn't expect me to do that um and it's it's weird i've I've, I've always kind of you know i've written music to entertain and kind of please myself yeah yeah but more and more i'm kind of you know people saying oh i like this and i like that and all that last song was kind of more interesting um and i've taken that in and i've you know i feel like i want to uh for the first time i want people to actually like me do you know what i mean and actually you know get my music out there you know it's it's a bit (laughs) It's not like at all. Is there extra pressure then when that's the case? Um, not really, because I can always go back to the way I was, just releasing music and not telling anyone about it. You know, I was, I was quite happy doing that as well. But yeah, yeah I, I think my next track's definitely going to be something that I, I want people to to hear and I want people to enjoy and, and get something out of, yeah. and, and not just myself. Be you know a bit more selfless with it that that respect. And. Yeah. Uh, do the people who knew you from playing heavier stuff and when they hear your new music, what's the reaction? Um, I don't know because I mean, a lot of the people from from back in the day, um, from that sort of underground Glasgow metal scene, I only keep in touch with certain people, but the people that I still speak to are all great. And I mean, it's it's quite an eclectic bunch of people as well that like that. I mean, all the people who like. Or kind of Ramstein and Slipknot and all that kind of stuff. They also listen to the radio and listen to yeah. Julepa in the weekend and all that. You know, it's, it's. I think people underestimate that. You know, the folks think, oh well, you played that once and therefore that's what you play from now on. And actually, as your uh, influences playlist shows, you listen to you know, a real wide uh, range of things, and that's you know how it, how it should be. I think. Yeah, everyone grows up with their their parents' record collection. Yeah. You know, and then they kind of. It's, I think when you go to school and it's, it's your, your pals that kind of get you into all the kind of rock music and things like that, but your parents have all this wee treasure trove. Like I had a like Queen's Greatest Hits on cassette growing up. Um, so it's, it's that kind of thing that kind of got me into music. And then it wasn't until later in life that, you know, all this kind of like Limp Biscuit came out and I went crazy for that. You know, it's, it's that sort of stuff that you're, it hits you at a certain age. That's right. Absolutely. So, uh, but yeah, I think I've matured past that slightly. Um, well, I have to say, I think Exit Scene's the best thing you've done. So, I've heard the years that you've done so far, and I'm looking forward to what you do next. Well, thank you. Well, that's the exact thing that I'm going for, is to, to please other people for once. There you go. You, you have succeeded, Scott. Listen, thanks very much for taking the time to have a chat. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. And this is Sapien and Provocateur. <laughs> 